Hello, welcome to my talk, where I would like to present to you our work on a virtual reality platform for immersive education in computer graphics. This is a joint work together with Filip Haha and Petr Vanicek, and we all come from the Faculty of Applied Sciences of the University of West Bohemia. So, what did we do? We have created a software platform for teaching computer graphics-based subjects in virtual reality. We mostly focus on explaining stuff that is inherently 3D in a way that is natural and easy to understand. Our system allows sharing a single space by a teacher and multiple possibly remote students who can freely navigate the space view the scene from any viewpoint and interact with the scene. Our system is based on off-the-shelf hardware that has recently been introduced to the market and that allows providing a VR headset for every student of the class. The headsets that we use are standalone and that means that they don't need a special setup and they don't even need a dedicated computer to run the VR. Our main motivation was to simplify the teaching of a mesh processing course. In this course, for example, we do an introduction to differential geometry. And as you probably all know, this is a difficult subject that has high requirements on 3D imagination. However, using traditional aids such as whiteboard or slides, the inherently 3D topics are explained using purely 2D projections and this makes things difficult to understand. This problem might be slightly mitigated by using the means of 3D graphics. That way it is possible to prepare the 3D scenes and then view them from different angles. However, even in this scenario, usually only one person controls the view and the scenes themselves might still be difficult to understand because ordinary displays do not provide stereoscopic 3D. Also note that preparing such teaching aids is time consuming and the teacher has to prepare all the steps ahead of time and then play the prepared sequence step by step. It is difficult to interactively change the scene in order to follow some questions by the students. It is important to note that our main motivation was not to allow remote teaching. In fact, the project started in summer 2019 and was motivated by the availability of cheap, high-performance virtual reality headsets and by the fact that we perceived that virtual reality could provide better insight into 3D relations than traditional teaching means. In fact, originally we planned to use VR in a shared classroom and it only came as a lucky coincidence that our system also allowed remote teaching, which was obviously very useful in spring 2020 when the software was finished and we were able to test it in a real class. So, what is it that our system can provide you? There is a basic set of features that includes the following. The teacher is able to load an arbitrary 3D mesh in the OBJ format and this mesh is automatically distributed to the students. The teacher is also allowed to manipulate the mesh, that means rotate it, translate it and scale it and these manipulations are also propagated to the students. The teacher can also draw into space using a brush of selected size and of selected color. Everything that the teacher draws is immediately transmitted to the students and displayed to them as well. The teacher can also draw on surfaces. And finally, he or she is also able to use a pointer to point at different parts of the scene. The pointer can be turned on and off and whenever it is turned on, all the students can see it as well. The final feature is to load and show an arbitrary PDF slide. 
this slide is again distributed to all the students and it is shown as a texture on a virtual projection plane that is located in the scene. The students have a similar set of abilities. They can freely roam around the scene and they can even look at the scene from the same viewpoint as the teacher. They can also draw into space and their drawings are seen by everyone. Finally, they can also point at things, given that they turn on the pointer. Note that voice chat is not part of the project, because originally we expected that the VR sessions are going to take place in a single classroom. However, in practice, running a parallel voice chat session via Discord or Google Meet turns out to be a fully viable option. It is therefore fully possible to interact remotely, talk about the 3D scene, paint into it, and point at different parts of the scene. We have built our system with Unity, the game engine, and this gives us a lot of freedom for the future. We are targeting the Oculus Quest and the Oculus Quest 2 headsets. These are standalone systems, so there is no PC needed to run the VR. It provides inside-out tracking, which means that you do not need to set up any base stations in order to have a full 3D 6DOF tracking of your head and of two controllers. The final great advantage of such a headset is that it's very cheap. With only $300 per headset, it is possible to provide each student with their own headset in a reasonably large class without ruining the university budget. The final part of the system is a standalone server application that runs as a .NET Core applications in Windows. However, it is easy to compile on other systems as well, because .NET Core is a multi-platform system. You probably ask yourself, why did we not use some existing solution? However, it turns out that none of the existing solutions matches our requirements. There are great modeling softwares, such as TiltBrush, that provide an excellent experience when drawing and painting into space. However, it is not easy to load an existing mesh into such a software, and they in general do not allow sharing the space with others. Also, there are some softwares that are specifically targeted at education in VR. However, most of them try to imitate a classical classroom in the VR. That is something we try to avoid. We did not want to replicate the classroom teaching experience. We actually wanted to extend it to provide features that are not possible in an ordinary classroom. There is one more key feature that our system provides, and that is the desktop client. Whenever a student cannot or do not want to use the VR, they can always resort to a client that connects to the same server and provides most of the same functionality. The students can connect to the server and view the class from any angle they choose. They only lack the possibility to change the viewpoint naturally by simply moving their heads, which is possible in VR, and they also lack the possibility to draw into space. These things are just not possible using the classical interface. However, the desktop client is built from the same code base, and therefore most changes that we make into the software are automatically propagated into both clients, to the VR client and to the desktop client. Finally, we have deployed our software at the University of West Bohemia, Faculty of Applied Sciences, Department of Computer Science and Engineering. We have tested it in one course in spring 2020, and the course was focused on mesh processing. There were only four students, out of which two were females. We have offered each student an Oculus Quest headset for landing, and two of them have used the VR, while the remaining two have used the desktop clients.
we have included short 3D presentation to each of the 13 lectures of the course. Each such session took about 10 minutes, and they were focused on the 3D heavy segments of the lectures. During the pilot deployment, we have identified and eliminated a lot of bugs, so the software is much more stable now. Also, we have managed to substantially reduce the friction. So it is now very easy to start a session and it does not distract from the flow of the lecture. Overall, we have received positive feedback. The students even said that they would like to see VR used in other courses as well. And they had many suggestions for future improvement. Naturally, with the small number of students involved we do not have any statistical data. However, we did some final survey and our paper contains all the answers from the students. There is still a lot to be desired from our system and we plan to improve it further in the future. The most obvious observation is that most of the time the teacher was mostly painting arrows into the 3D scene. Therefore, we would like to have a specialized tool for drawing straight arrows. Also, placing semi-transparent planes might simplify explanation of certain parts. Another pivotal feature that we are working on right now and which will be included in the future versions of the software is session recording and replaying. That way, the students can not only choose their viewpoint during the session, but they can also view the explanation from any viewpoint also in the future. Finally, we would like to add support for other VR platforms as well. This should be quite straightforward because of the choice of Unity as the engine that we built on. Now, let me show you a short session from the viewpoint of a teacher. Here, I will be explaining some basics on curvature computation and the second fundamental form. So, here's a shape I would like to discuss with you a little bit and see if the means of computing the curvature on the surface actually makes any sense for surfaces. So, let's have a look at this shape and pick a point, say this one. This is a nice point on the surface. And as we said, there's a unique normal, uh, let's draw it pink, like this. It's orthogonal to the surface. And then we can choose a tangent, right? So let's choose a nice tangent, let's say this direction, and see what is happening uh, if we go along this direction on the surface. So the normal and the tangent, they form a, a plane, it looks maybe like this. And if we cut the plane, uh, if we cut the surface along the plane, what we, get is, what we get is a planar curve. So the curve is going to look maybe a little bit like this. And we said that the normal curvature at this point along this tangent is equal to the curvature of this planar curve at this point. And we also said that the curvature is actually the rate of change of the normal, which is bound to the rate of change of the, of the tangent. So let's have a look at what's happening with the normal. So let's say that we went along the curve, maybe down here, and the normal no longer points straight upwards, but now it points in this direction. So if we plot the changed normal back here, we see what's the change of the normal, and it's going to be a, a vector that looks like this. And that makes some kind of sense, because there is a non-zero change, and maybe we can measure the length of this vector and uh, find out that the curvature is maybe proportional to the length of this vector. However, there's a different direction which we could choose and we will see that something else is happening there. So imagine that we chose a, a tangent like this. So what's happening if we cut the surface using a plane like that? 
what is happening? What kind of curve do we get? And if we, if we choose the right point of view, you will see that the surface is actually completely flat and we are actually going along a straight line, which I can draw as well. So here, if we go along this direction, we get a straight line and what we expect is that we are going to get a zero curvature, right? Because a straight line must have a zero curvature. That is all from me. I thank you for your attention. If you would like to try out our system, you can download the source code from this GitLab link, or you can contact me or any of my coworkers, and we will give you support in trying to employ VR in your teaching sessions as well. Thank you very much, and we will be waiting for questions.